I'm going to say something divisive. No, not that. I like the dynamic of Greg Miller and Colin Moriarty. I have for years. When I got back into gaming, it was to Podcast Beyond that I turned to get a dose of news and opinion regarding the PlayStation ecosystem that I was sinking back into. At this point, about six years later, I've probably enjoyed thousands of hours of their content because ultimately, I liked them as people. They seemed like good dudes to me. I didn't always agree with what they said about a lot of things over the years, but none of that really mattered. Their passion for games and PlayStation was clearly genuine, and it was something that I had in common with them. I know that if I was even remotely popular, I would catch some shit for that, but I don't really care. Um, you know, Miller does come off as an opportunist and a shill sometimes, sure, and a lot of gamers still seem to be butthurt over Moriarty calling them entitled, which their still burning hatred probably proves, after all. I mean, who gives a fuck what someone says about a piece of art? Unless you made it, someone else's opinion should have literally no effect on you. But back to what I was saying before, I genuinely enjoyed watching these two friends debate and discuss points, and found myself often highly entertained by their knowledge and insight into PlayStation. And clearly, looking at the meteoric success and rise of Kinda Funny Games, I wasn't the only person that thought that. But yesterday, Colin quit Kinda Funny, announcing his resignation effective immediately on Facebook and Twitter. I'm not going to read through the entire post, but I'll leave it on screen and you're welcome to pause the video and read it for yourself if you wish. But the gist of it is acknowledging that Colin was moving in a different direction than the other members of the group. And I have no doubt that that is true. Undoubtedly, Colin was the most intellectual of the group, often offering the strongest opinions and talking about deeper topics. So that, alongside his right-leaning views politically and just his sheer passion for history and politics in general, often shoved a wedge into the shows and ensuing discussions. Clearly, that wedge was driven into the relationship he had with the rest of the group as well. The situation bums me out not just because I no longer have the PlayStation podcast that I've enjoyed for years, but because it's clear that we can assemble some of the puzzle of what has happened, and it isn't a pretty picture. So Colin's resignation comes on the heels of a tweet, one that he posted on International Women's Day, a day that I also mocked and criticized in a video that I've linked in the description. The tweet is obviously a joke. To cry misogyny after reading that tweet might make you eligible for a brain scan because you must be lacking something upstairs. Honestly, the only controversy that should have arisen from this tweet is whether or not it was funny. Discuss the merits of that all you will. It's certainly not important to me. A joke is either funny or it isn't. That's the end of the story for me. But after an outpouring of disapproval, Greg took to Facebook to post this lengthy apology. I even responded to the post on Twitter at the time, saying that I believe the apology to be unwise and unnecessary. I believe that when the chips are down and the shit really hits the fan, that's when you show people who you really are. How you react to adversity says a lot about you, and the way Greg reacted and how Tim Geddes, another kind of funny co-founder, handled this non is very telling to me. Again, if you wish to read the full statement, then by all means, pause the video, but ultimately I find that Greg comes off as a stern father figure. Like when I would bring home a shitty report card from school, my dad would have that kind of tone and look on his face that just said, you're better than this. And, you know, this, this is a disappointing use of your talents. I, I hope you choose something better next time. And Greg comes off as that kind of passive aggressive, but also buffoonish because he acknowledges some of the absolutely outlandish and outrageous shit that he's said as writing jokes over the years. But because he was able to make those jokes with the evidently necessary context, he shouldn't be lambasted for them or have them taken as literal statements of belief or intent. Many people could have found these jokes offensive. Many of them involved controversial topics, and I'm sure some people were offended. But fuck them. You don't censor yourself because some people don't want to hear a joke. Get over it. If I don't think a comedian is funny, I don't watch them. I don't demand that they stop telling those jokes. 
Well, maybe Colin targeted women with his joke, and a subsection of kind of funny fans believe this sin is punishable by excommunication. But again, I doubt that because Nick is introduced in every show as the producer slash seducer. Surely that would be offensive and demeaning to women as well. I mean, what are they? People? Or sex objects like so many trophies to be won? What about Tim Getty's obsession with wanting to fuck the Disney princesses? Yes, indeed. I see there is certainly no cognitive dissonance or special pleading at work here. In fairness to the message that the remaining kind of funny members have consistently pushed, explicitly, Colin's resignation was not because of the tweet. But forgive me for doubting that when that statement is bookended by 10 minutes of discussion about the tweet and its impact on the community. So was the tweet the sole reason? Of course not. That would be a stupid assertion. But it certainly was the reason why Colin didn't attend PAX East, and why the resignation happened now. Asserting anything different would be insulting to our intelligence. So it wasn't because of the tweet, but it was kind of because of the tweet. And that's the thing that baffles me about this whole thing. I guess that's why I'm doing this video, because I really did feel like a member of a community that wouldn't stoop to this level of stupidity. But I was wrong, and I have to admit that now. We'd made it so far, I, I really thought that we'd shown our true colors. And tried as I might to find abrasive tweets aimed at women in the responses to any of the postings I've mentioned, or will go on to mention in this video, I couldn't find any. Is that just a quirk of Twitter's awful algorithm? Maybe. But I looked through hundreds of tweets and found none that I would even consider to be objectionable, and many were downright reasonable. So when Tim Geddes tweets out, these are absolutely not the fans I want, I'm left wondering what the fuck he's talking about, and finding myself not really wanting to further engage with a person that wouldn't want me watching his content based on the fact that I didn't find a dad joke offensive or misogynistic. Because I tried really hard to find the fans that Tim evidently finds supremely objectionable, and came up with nothing. The most unreasonable responses I saw were, ironically, mostly from outraged men that seemed to be under the impression that jokes somehow reinforce oppressive structures within society. If I've never heard a self-refuting claim, then I sure have now. I mean, from responses like this, you'd think that Colin tweeted he wants abortions to be done with buck knives, or women to literally have their mouths sewn shut, or that all societal evils stem from vaginas, though they seem to have no trouble believing that the reverse is true. Seriously, some people need to get a fucking grip. I mean, Jesus Christ. My brain hurts from the sheer amount of stupid that I sifted through, digging through tweets, trying to find something to credit this outrage to. Which brings us full circle to the resignation itself. We'll probably never know the extent to which musings like mine are true or the degree to which the official story is true. But it seems likely that the bottom line is this. The other members of Kind of Funny saw Colin as a threat to the utopian ideal they have in their heads about what their internet community is. Because Colin was the one that rattled the cage the most, he became a threat to the bottom line of the business. In their eyes, evidently the greater threat to their purse strings and success was having him continue to be a part of the business, instead of defending him. It's a community that I no longer want to be a part of, because I perceive this incident as Greg, Tim, and to a certain extent Nick, by collusion, choosing their literal echo chamber and figurative paradise over their friend. As Greg tries to PR spin everything incessantly, to the point of coming off as a sycophant, it comes off as disingenuous, and playing to what people think they want. I guess we'll see soon enough, but I wonder how many people like me are waiting for a bit more content to trickle out before making the decision and seriously considering taking our time, our views, and our Patreon support somewhere else. I see an unwillingness to be reasonable and to be challenged by something as ineffectual as a joke. And any community that thinks that a joke, a joke, or any replies acknowledging that social justice warriors would be outraged at said joke, or that come in defense of this joke, noting that it is obviously stale humor and not an example of misogyny, 
is no community that I wish to be a part of. And I guess that feeling is mutual. I was going to put clips from the kind of funny morning show in this video, but it was taking too long to download. So I've left a link in the description if you want to check it out. If you liked this video, then please consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot. And feel free to hit that like button as well. Share it with your friends and let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for listening.